Okay. Um, hi, everybody. Um, good afternoon and good evening for some of you. I want to, you know, uh, first of all, welcome all of you to, uh, and before I pass the mic to our amazing speaker, I would like to know which uh, or how many of you have ever participated in any Latinas in Tech event. Uh, I encourage you to use the, you know, the little chat that we have on the, uh, on the side of the screen. Uh, and I see, yeah, some of you are new, some of you are, you know, uh, coming back to another of our events. So I'll, I'll thank you so much. And um, let me share my screen really quick. Oh my gosh, yes, everybody. <laughs> welcome, welcome. We're still getting more and more people logging in. Um, I wanna share my screen really quick to introduce you a little bit about um, uh, Latinas in Tech here. So, uh, hold on, I'm gonna put percent here. So, for whoever is new to, to this uh, organization or these events, um, so Latinas in Tech, it's uh, a nonprofit organization with the mission of connect, support, and empower Latina women working in the tech industry. We have more than 11 chapters, which is the presence in different major cities in the US, more than 9,000 women with 23 different nationalities, and more than 100 companies have even partnered with us or collaborate. Uh, so, no further ado, I would like to introduce you, Greg Rojas, uh, so I can pass the mic to him and he can, you know, start doing the presentation. Hi, Greg, how are you? I am great. Thank you for having me here. Really excited no, to We're super excited. I'm very thankful. <laughs> yeah, so I I'm going to just jump right into it um, uh, in my presentation. But again, my name is Gregorio. I'm a co-founder of Savio Coding Bootcamp. And what I do there is actually I'm the head instructor. So what I'm about to do here with you all is uh, basically what I do all day, every day, it feels like. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. And what I'm going to bring up on my screen, oh, by the way, about questions, right? If you have questions, uh, just get those questions out through the Q&A or raise your little hand and, and we're going to take them uh, as they come. Uh, you know, we got about an hour here to talk and I don't, you know, I find it really uh, engaging and better if I can have a little bit of a back and forth with uh, the audience. I don't want to necessarily just hear myself talk uh, for an hour. I want to- yeah, Gregorio, we have somebody here asking, uh, Dicey, to say, what is the bootcamp name? The bootcamp name, the bootcamp is called Savio. Yes. So let me let me write this out here, right? Savio, uh, and the website is actually savio.la, okay? Um, based out of Southern California, but we train remotely. So right now we have people throughout the whole country. Uh, at what point uh, we had people coming in from the Philippines, right? And I had someone in Germany for a little bit. Uh, so throughout the country, you know, remote, remote is totally cool. So uh, from wherever you're at, this is a similar experience. So sometimes people don't, they haven't had an opportunity to feel what it's like to learn remotely, not just online, but remotely where we can have some live interaction. This is a lot what it's gonna feel like. So uh, question and answers, it'll just keep coming like that. Um, so uh, I'm, I hope to, to be able to have more of a dialogue with you than just me presenting information. So what I, what I want to start on with um, is that not only is this intro JavaScript, like foundational JavaScript, it's more like uh, foundational software development. Uh, and I like to teach JavaScript uh, as a beginner language for people. Uh, and I like to do so not just as a, talking about the fundamentals of software, but also with some tools, some other tools. And the tools that uh, I picked to work with here on the right-hand side is I have, you know, your regular uh, browser and it's a Chrome browser. Um, and I'm gonna start talking and I'm gonna write JavaScript on a web page. So on the left-hand side, I also have another tool called VS Code. And this environment that I'm working in is pretty cool. Um, this VS Code editor, so it's called a code editor uh, the fancy way of calling it is a development environment or a development IDE. Uh, that's what developers might refer to these tools as. And what, what I'm looking at here right now are the bones. I have this file called the bones of every HTML page, right? Um, now, what goes inside of an HTML page? And in fact, if I call it an HTML document, um, you might begin to think a little bit about this like your Word document, right? So in your Word documents, when you write Word documents, you know that there's some type of title you kind of put at the top. And the content of it, um, the content of the body here, 
uh, content of the body would go here. Now, notice how these things are, there's these little things in here that we're gonna call HTML tags. And if I zoom in a little bit more, these little HTML tags are what, you know, delineate that, hey, here comes my body. Inside of these uh, tags is gonna be my body. Uh, and inside of my title uh, a tag is gonna be um, my actual title. Now, why am I working inside of VS Code, the development environment? It's because as soon as I hit save here, it dynamically uh, changes uh, the stuff here on the right-hand side. So you can see here that the content of the body has changed. Uh, and again, if I go and say the corny uh, hello world uh, for my body, the body of the, the page will change. Uh, and very important, um, the title, right? Hello from LA, uh, it changes the title. So kind of neat, right? The title is what gets rendered in the tab, okay? Now, this is the bones of every single HTML page. If I use my development tools here to collapse this, it's basically an HTML document. There's what it says that announces, hey, here's an HTML document. Uh, and inside of it, you have the different components of it. I'm gonna switch over to another page that's gonna have the same bones, but it's gonna have a little bit more. And it's gonna have a little bit more because of, of the fact that I want to show a different interface uh, when I wanna start teaching JavaScript. And you see that this, this file here, if I collapse it, here's the HTML document. Uh, here is the title, right? And here's the title called Foundations because this is part of a course called JavaScript Foundations. And as I scroll down here, look, I can use this to get rid of some of this noise. I have these little markers that say, hey, write my JavaScript code in here, right? And so it's on this page that I'm gonna start writing my JavaScript code. And the very first thing that I'm gonna write and why, and I'm gonna show you now why am I doing this inside of a browser is that, is that as I write a variable, I first have to declare a variable. So I'm gonna write this out and I'm gonna come back and explain it. I'm gonna create, create a variable called message and again, I saw some people commenting on this, super corny, um, uh, hello world, right? First thing that we do in software is we write something that says hello world. And what you're gonna see here on the right-hand side in the second when this finishes uh, loading is that we have a property or uh, a little label that has like a little arrow that points to the word hello world, to, well, to the sentence, to the exclamation hello world. And so on the right-hand side is what we call here the Sabio object graph. We've just repurposed some open source technology and applied it to what we wanna do to teach people uh, about software. Uh, what we have on the left-hand side, and this graph is gonna get a little bit more involved as we continue across the hour here. Uh, let's break down what I did here on the left. I, I have declared, this, this is a keyword in JavaScript bar. There's three other keywords that I could use to declare, to announce to the JavaScript engine that I want a new variable. Var happens to be one. Um, my little graphing tool happens to work best with the keyword var, so that's why I use the keyword var. And then I got a name. I, ha I need to name something. I need, a, I need to be able to name the little piece of data that I have here that's called hello world. I need a name, I just need a name for it because later on I want to be refer to it by name. So the name is gonna be message. And then I use this equal sign. You can come back uh, to your math days, right? Look, equal sign, what does the equal sign do? It simply says that this value is going to be assigned to the message of variable. And so I can have uh, many different variables. I'm gonna create another variable um, and I'm gonna assign it a number, right? So age, now naming is really important because the names of our variables tell us a lot. The fact that I called this age, one of the things that it told you is that it was probably gonna expect it to be a number. If I would have called it uh, X, that's not that helpful. So as my page over here refreshes, we're gonna see that it's gonna draw out uh, the number, again, with another little pointer. And so here's where I will pause for a second to talk even more about what variables are to try to get you to understand what a variable is. There are two main ways to describe what a variable is. The first way, because it kind of makes most sense in, in English, uh, to talk about a variable. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop my camera over here for one second. Okay. Gregorio, I, I, yes. I just want to interrupt really quick because we start having a few questions here. So one of them for Camila, she says, where, did, 
you using Visual Studio or are we still using it? So Visual Studio, really confusing. I don't know why Microsoft did this, but there's two separate tools. Uh, VS Code, which is short for Visual Studio Code, and that's a completely different thing than um, Visual Studio. Really frustrating, but it's a completely different thing. Right, and somebody else asked, what is the difference between Java Studio and Java? Between JavaScript and Java, I see I pulled this up. Okay, so this is a good question. Your browser, so the short version, JavaScript is what runs in your browser. Uh, Java is a different language. I mean, it's a very different language and it doesn't run on your browser. It would run on the web server. Okay, so anytime you write, uh, this is true of like 99% of the situations when you write code that runs in a web browser, if it is software, right, if it's a programming language, it's going to be JavaScript. On the server is where Java runs. And one of the newer uh, technologies is called Node. Node is when JavaScript runs on the server. So you can now have both JavaScript and Java run on their server. Perfect. And um, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, I see the other question. Uh, you know, you don't necessarily need to follow along. I'm sorry, you don't need to code along. Just because um, <clears throat> all the, you know, we're going to send you a link later on. And you can have like, uh, there's like 20 hours of video of me doing this stuff. So you can listen to me later uh, and work with this little graph tool, which is pretty cool. Um, I'd rather have you kind of focus on uh, what I'm doing. And if you have any questions, just shoot them over. Thank you, Gregorio. Thank you. Okay. So here we are, two variables. First way people describe a variable is to say that a variable contains data. So that somehow this hello world is inside of message, that the number uh, is inside of age, that <clears throat> you put these values inside of a variable. And that's a decent way of understanding it. It kind of gets the point across to a, certain, to a certain extent. The second way though, is to call a variable, not a container of data, but a pointer. This name message and this name age, what they are, and you can imagine if you were holding some type of pointer, uh, here's age and it points to a specific location, technically an address uh, in memory. So age is a pointer, message is a pointer, right? And so what do they point to? They point to a specific location in memory. So you can think about, if you say address, right? We know what an address is. Um, you go to an address and when you get there, there's something there. It's the same thing with variables. Uh, here's this message, it's a pointer. What does it point to? It points to an address. So if you follow that little line all the way down to the end where the address is located, what do you get there? You get some type of value. Uh, this value, because there's different types of values. So this value that is um, surrounded by quotes is a string. Uh, this value here that doesn't have um, any quotes is a number. And in fact, if I were to say, uh, if I put in my first name, let's say, and I didn't put quotes around it, um, you would see uh, in a moment, if I could run this, in fact, hey, look, I'm gonna run, try to run this, um, and I gotta spell my name correctly. Uh, but you'll see that somehow this didn't work out well, right? And in fact, this actually threw an error that uh, I'll show you where you can see the errors in a little bit, but it says it's undefined. It, there was some type of problem with that because uh, I didn't put quotes around it. And once you put quotes around it, boom, 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 it's gonna spit out uh, the right variable name, right? So now I have three different variables uh, and there's, different, there's many different types of data that a variable can hold. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you one of the really big advantages of this graph is to show you the importance of this new type of variable that I'm gonna declare. Um, and let me first, actually, let me get first name up here. All right, because uh, we're gonna go with Gregorio again. And then, oh, I'm gonna create an object. In this object, so no, now I'm denoting, not with double quotes, I'm not denoting this with double quotes. This is now the curly brackets. And inside the curly brackets, I want to give it a property. This property is going to feel a lot like um, a variable, but we're going to go with Liliana. 
uh, who is the CEO of Salvia. So <laughs> the first name's a string. We've seen that look, what that looks like before. That's going to see. And then here comes person, a new variable that points to an object. Now, let's look here. Now, I, what we've tried to do is to denote that this, this is a little different. This little pointer, what's going on here is a little different than the other pointer that we have called uh, first name. We have first name as a string. And the, the first name inside of here is also a string. But it's really important to see that the person, the person pointer is pointing to an object and it's an object reference. This object reference, again, it lives in memory. So this person is a variable, which means that it points to a value in memory. It points to an address in memory. And when I get there, I find this thing called an object uh, that it itself is encapsulating, that it kind of wraps up another uh, set of properties. It's kind of nice because I can do something like say uh, last name, and I'm gonna give it a last name and it's actually not equals. It's uh, gonna be a colon and in between the properties, I need a comma. So, and this is the, the syntax that I'm writing, the rules that I'm, that I'm following. Um, you know, there's rules in grammar, right? How there's rules in grammar, um, where to put punctuation and whatnot. In software development, we call that just the, the syntax of the language. And so where I'm putting the equal signs, where I'm putting the commas, where I'm putting the, the the semicolons, that's all part of the syntax of the language. But now I have this person property, this person variable that is a pointer, uh, and it points to an object that has two properties. So again, the graph is trying to show you by putting a box around it that these two properties are somehow uh, related, right? And they're related because they belong to the same object called person. Now, <clears throat> watch what I'm doing, or what I'm gonna do here now. I'm gonna say this other name, what if I wanted another name and instead of, you know what, uh, not another, I want the same name. What if I just wanted the same name? I could just take this value and put it here. Uh, and if I did that for my same name, what I would see uh, is that I have Gregorio and Gre Gregorio. <clears throat> but you know, that seems like a little bit uh, inefficient. Why don't I just reuse this variable? Because I can reuse this variable uh, and say that the same name of variable should be basically the same as the first name variable. And you'll see that I render this um, in the same manner. Gregorio, I would yes. like to address a question that we also have here. Uh, somebody's asking if you can quickly explain variable versus property. Very good. Variable versus property. <clears throat> when you are, so in the graph, if we look at this graph, uh, I, these guys are numbered, right? Because uh, they are literally, they were declared. Um, they were declared uh, in scope. Uh, that's a big technical term. They were just, they were numbered because they were numbered in the order that the JavaScript engine recognized them, right? And the way that the JavaScript engine recognized them is top down, right? So one line after the other, this line first, then this one, and then the following. <clears throat> a variable is gonna be this guy that sits out here on the left-hand side. So on the left-hand side, it's basically the things that we know about, right? All our different pointers that are gonna point us to a particular value uh, are these, these individuals here, first name, same name, and person. They, they are essentially, the only way that we get to the right-hand side, right? The only way that we get to any location is that we need to have uh, these variable names, right? So you can almost think about this to make an analogy in the real world. Uh, this might be, um, you know, again, this is an address, right? So this is going to point us to 100 Main Street, to 200 Main Street. Uh, and this one looks like it points us to 200 Main Street as well, right? So you have that in hand and you have to then walk into the, you have to now get pointed to some place in memory. So then these guys are located in memory. This guy's located in memory. And then when I get to this object, this object is not just one value. Right? Here's just one value. Here's just one value. This object is something that can have multiple values. Right? And if we take this first name that is one value uh, and we put it inside of this object, uh, an English term, you could say that this is just you know, an attribute of the person. Right? Just like you know, I, with the real world, right? one of the reasons why I create person objects as opposed to something more abstract is because you understand that, you know, uh, I'm Gregorio, 
I, my name, it just happens to be an attribute that describes me. My last name is another attribute that describes me. Uh, there's a lot of different attributes that would describe the object uh, or the person that I am. And so if it's going to describe something else, uh, it's going to be a property of that object. And so here's the first name property. It's an attribute that describes, it gives us some type of meaning, uh, a little bit more meaning uh, to what this person object is in here. Um, and then let me see here. Let me, let me go back into this uh, Q and A. Let me pump through these here a little bit. Different languages like Python and Java. It's kind of like telling the difference between English and Spanish. It's got different grammar, it's got different words, but it's very much like that. Uh, and like English and Spanish, um, there are many different ways to communicate. Um, and the, you know, do the, do the adjectives come before the nouns, right? There's gonna be some languages that flip that around. And like a lot of languages, um, sometimes you can't express yourself as, as well as you'd like in Spanish, or actually you can't express yourself as, for me, you can't express uh, yourself as well in English as you can in Spanish. So when that happens, that also happens in programming languages. And it's probably one of the reasons why some people would love one language over the other. Um, how do you know to use a string uh, uh, with quotes or no quotes? Well, every time you have a string, you're going to use confusing, really tough. There's three different ways you can put quotes around a string, the single quotes, the double quotes, and then this funny little character called the back tick that's up by the tilde. Can we change the name on the website without using um, prompt num, prompt num, uh, the name of the website? Um, I'm going to... I'm gonna punt on that because I'm not entirely clear why, what that question is. So maybe uh, you can come back to me with that one and I can be helpful a little bit later. The, the next thing I wanna show you, right? Cause now we're gonna see, here's my person Liliana. And there is, um, she's, I'm gonna make a twin for Liliana. Uh, and here comes person, All right? Big difference here. This, this little concept right here, to visualize this, uh, I can't even tell you how many years it took me to understand this. Uh, and I wish someone would have drawn this <laughs> for me, uh, but here it is. When we take uh, and declare a new variable, twin, and we assign it the value of person, right? Which is this value up here. Same way that we did this, big difference we see on the right-hand side is that same name and first name, they seemingly got their own copy of that value. They got their own copy of Gregorio. But person and twin, they have separate pointers, right? They do have separate pointers, but they point to the same object. And this behavior here is, and this understanding is how you're gonna start learning about and understanding what an object reference is. Because these variables reference an object in memory. And you can have many variables reference the same object in memory. Right? They're coming at it from different places. Right? One of them is coming at it from position three. The other one's coming at it from position four, just because it's the fourth one. They have different pointers, um, but they get to the same address and memory. Really important, right? Like I could be across, I could be over here um, in Santa Monica and you could be in Florida. And if we have an address in Nebraska, we can both get to the same location. We have different pointers, but it's gonna take us a different path potentially to get there. But when we get there, it's gonna be the same object and very important, the same values. Now, here, <clears throat> what I'm going to introduce uh, and show you how, why this is really important. If I take my same name, and by the way, all this, uh, uh, I wanna point this out, all this, this stuff here that shows up here, this autocomplete, we call this IntelliSense in software, um, really helpful uh, for uh, writing code, really helpful, right? A lot of these tips, I just hit tab and there's my same name. I am going to change my name to what I jokingly tell everybody is my Starbucks name. Um, and so here's Gregorio. Uh, and now I have changed same name to Greg. And look, they do have different values. Fantastic. Let me now take the twin. And now I'm going to use this thing. When I put this dot here, this is called dot notation. So by putting a dot, it means that I want to access a property inside of this object, right? I don't wanna, by saying twin dot first name, I am literally saying I want to change the first name property of this person of the twin object, right? I wanna change this thing. It's not the outside variable right here. 
uh, and I'm gonna change it to Lily. Let's see what happens here. So I'm changing now, I'm assigning a value to the first name of twin. Let's see how this gets represented uh, on the right-hand side. <clears throat> on the right-hand side, you will see that I effectively ended up changing the first name of both twin and person, right? Because when I went to access this first name property, what's going on behind the scenes is first, we have to find our way to this twin, right? So we have to go to the address that twin points to, uh, and twin points to this particular address in memory. Uh, and then when I get there, I gotta go and look for the first name property and I'm gonna assign it a new value called Lily. Now, why this is important now, I'm gonna show you another tool, right? So beginning software uh, development, you gotta start learning about your tools. The tools is what takes a regular software developer and supercharges them, right? You could just be mediocre developer, but if you're great at working with your tools, you're gonna, you're gonna really outperform a lot of people. So I'm gonna just simply right click in this browser. You can do this on any web page, and I'm gonna show you in a second. And I'm gonna click inspect uh, because then I'm gonna get a whole host of other tools show up. <clears throat> so we could talk about all the different tools that are in here, but I just wanna focus on the console. <clears throat> what do I use the console for? Um, oh, let me take some questions before I move on to that. How can we get a copy of the person variable without modified uh, the reference in memory? Okay. So let me show you a quick way to do that. Let me show you a quick way to get a copy of that person variable without the modified reference in memory. All right, so there's a lot of ways to do this. I'm gonna show you, let me make that complete copy. So before I change the name, let me just reset what's going on in here. Uh, and there's Liliana and there's Liliana Mohi. Now, the, um, I'm gonna leave twin up and I'm gonna declare uh, a copy. I'm gonna call it copy of Lily. And this now is one of their, the newest uh, enhancements to the JavaScript language. This particular syntax that I'm doing right now here. Oh, it's not this, it's not that, hold on, it's this guy. Uh, so here comes an object, right? Just like I started out declaring this object uh, before. Um, and what I wanna do is I want to copy, and here's a quick little copy command, dot, dot, dot. These little three dots uh, is called the spread operator. Uh, it's basically a little tool that tells us, hey, I wanna copy uh, whatever is inside of person, right? So here's person, I wanna copy all those properties uh, and into a new object. And when I do that, uh, we're gonna see that the copy of Lily is actually gonna feel a little bit more like what we got going on on the top. And there it is. So there's my little copy of Lily, right? So that is something that is really important, knowing how to copy data and knowing how to work with different copies of data. Um, something called functional programming. People do a lot of this in, in functional programming. Now, also really important. Um, all right, so this is what some of the newer syntax to use to copy. Again, another frustrating thing. You can ac accomplish this copying thing um, in a couple of different ways. But why is this important now is because if I take my copy, right, and this is this might this might feel um, uh, like it's obvious at this point, but let's just say I'm gonna take the copy of Lily, who's got a first name, and I'm gonna change it to Lily, right, because that's what I wanted to do. And when the graph shows up, it's gonna show up, and we're gonna see that um, copy of Lily is going to have, let me hit refresh again, there we go. Oh, just when it got drawn, there you go. Lily, uh, while Liliana uh, remains as Liliana. Let me take another one real quick here. Okay. Now back to the console. Let me show you why the console is really important. Uh, and let me clean this up a little bit. Let me get rid of the... But Gregorio, we also have Carolina say, will the same change in Liliana's happen if we did person, first name, equal Lily, question mark? She put on that on the chat. I don't know, you can see that. Uh, let, me, let me find a little chat guy. Let me find a little chat guy. Okay, with the same change, 
that the same change in Liliana happened if we did person that first name equals Lily. Yes, absolutely. In fact, let's go see that. Let's go visualize that. Um, if we said, uh, oh, I lost it. If we said person that first name, yeah. Let's, let's go see that. that. So, by, by the way, one of the things that throws people off, um, if you haven't done, if you haven't tried to learn software development and you've come, you know, you're a really good student, one of the things that's a little awkward is that unlike a lot of education where you have to put a lot of work in and you have to do a lot of practices and you have to kind of like do a lot of preparation before you try something out here in software development, it's kind of like trial by error, just hardcore trial by error. Wonder what, what wonder what would do if I did this, you're not going to hurt anything. Just try it and we'll see what happens. Um, and so, yes, by simply doing that, um, we affect the same change. All right. So here's person that first name and it's a Lily. Now, Watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to now, I didn't write this, right? So you can see here, I'm referencing this object, this object called person, this variable called first name. There's this thing that comes with the environment called the console. And if you've done any software development, like on Code Academy and Udemy, they're going to have you do a, a log. They have you log stuff. What does it mean to log stuff? Is that uh, I want to see uh, something important, right? So what does it mean? I want to see something important. Uh, when you console log information, it shows up here in the browser, right? So you can see here that it shows up in the browser. Now, this is really cool because not only does it tell me the really important thing that I wanted to know about, it tells me that if I come over here and I click on this, click, and then I bounce over to another one of the tabs in the developer tools, it tells me specifically where in my code that's happening, right? That's really powerful. But uh, now what would I really want? Again, I want to log important stuff. Maybe I wanted to log um, what, uh, I want to log the first name. Let me just log first name. Uh, and the semicolon here at the end of all these statements is kind of like the period in all our sentences. It's the end of a thought, it's the end of a statement. But now I want to say, you know what? I'm not just going to log a string. I want to log the entire person uh, down here. And again, our development environment is super cool. Here's Gregorio. Uh, why did Gregorio get spit out here? Is because if I click on this line, it shows me that I was logging the first name. Come back to the console. And I see now this cute little object. And look, I have to click on this little carrot, boom, and it expands it uh, to show me the different properties. Now, this isn't that helpful. You can see those last two properties. But if I had like 15 properties in here, it wouldn't show it to me on one line. I would click here to expand it. Now, what I've just demonstrated here is that data, the console logs from the left-hand side show up here in my browser. That's nice, but also really nice. Uh, I'm gonna hit this clear console so that it wipes out all this information because sometimes it gets noisy. I can directly from here, uh, kind of interrogate, ask the environment what's going on with it. So here's the first name. I just wanted, I wanted to spit out the first name. Oh, there's the first name Gregorio. If I want to look at the person object, I can see that the person object is uh, Lily, uh, Lily Monge. And then for, um, to validate this, there's twin, right? So I've just quickly kind of validated in a sense that uh, they have the same values, right? Uh, another way of doing it, the graph makes it a little prettier, but I can directly from here say twin, uh, that first name, and like I did on the left-hand side, assign it a new value, and I'm going to assign it now um, Miss Liliana, and if I hit enter, it's going to change the first name of the twin. Now, again, remember when I last time I spit out the person object? It spit out Lily and uh, Monge. If I ask for it to output that person object, now I can see that yes, this person variable does indeed point to the same object that the twin variable points to, right? So this variable points to this object. Uh, when I asked it to spit it out and output it here in the console, it went and followed the pointer to the address in memory. And when it got there, find an object and it spit out uh, the current value of that object. By the way, the, the, the graph here is, it doesn't change. It just gives us and paints us 
the current values uh, when the page first uh, shows up and renders. So uh, the stuff at the bottom that I'm changing is not gonna be reflective uh, of that thing at the top. Just FYI. So that's really powerful. I can change, I can change the properties. I can also, if I wanted to say, uh, well, let's go see what the copy of Lily looks like. I can say copy of Lily, I wanna see the, the first name. Um, let me hit clear again so I can bounce back up and let me look at the copy of Lily and what her last name is. And that is correct, right? Now I'm gonna pop open to, just cause I wanna, I wanna show you how, how cool the uh, console is. Uh, I'm gonna go to uh, LA Times. If I go to latimes.com and sometimes this is, more depressing than other times, but I'm gonna open up the console at latimes.com. And you can do this on any website. You can see here that the developers over here are really happy logging a bunch of stuff uh, that they think is important for them, right? Um, here's the, hey, I'm invoking an image, but by the way, most of the stuff that you see here is probably has to do with analytics. It probably has to do with ads. It has to do with capturing a lot of information about what you're doing. Depending upon what I do here, let me clear this out so we can get rid of some of that noise. Depending upon what I do on this page also, that maybe if I mouse over uh, the right thing, the right object, the right image, the right ad, it might spit out a little different log message that tells, that's you know, basically just the developers communicating. Um, so look, here's something that happened. I did something up here that might've sent this guy out. And this again has this little line that if I click on it, it's gonna pop open and it's gonna tell me what line it was that was responsible for console logging that, right? And here's that code that you can see in there. Uh, and more and more, sometimes, uh, you know, the more entertaining messages on here, are the ones that are gonna be like, you know, that are not safe for work, people, developers really frustrated, why isn't this working, exclamation mark, a bunch of asterisks in there. And so uh, you would see a lot of different things in here. So this is the, the console, you know, right? LATimes.com is not a little flimsy site, uh, you know, big time developers are just leave this stuff out there because they need to somehow give themselves some feedback. It allows them to lay down breadcrumbs so that, you know, you can follow the trail of your code, the trail of everything that you kind of keep track of uh, so that you can debug your code. Okay, so that's the console from latimes.com. Uh, I'm gonna come back to the console in one sec. Actually, I'm gonna leave that there because that doesn't make a lot of noise. Let me get rid of the copy. Oh, look, if I get rid of the copy and I hit save over here, this really doesn't tell me too much what's going on. Uh, and notice then again that here now I'm missing, I'm missing some stuff potentially. Uh, but then another great thing, the console is telling me, it's giving me back some feedback that something terrible is happening. Uh, and Eric tells me, look, copy of Lily is not defined. In English, it says, look, you're trying to access this thing called copy of Lily, but I don't know what this is. Uh, I don't know what this is, so I'm just going to throw an error, and I'm not going to do anything. And potentially, the rest of the code that might have been below here, which basically my console logs, they're not going to show up anymore. So those are the little errors. Let's see if I get another QA. Nope. Okay. So let me get rid of that line that throws an error. Oh, how do you get rid of lines? I can actually remove them, or I could put comments. To forward slash makes it a comment, which means that... It basically deactivates that line. You right clicked and then pressed what again to open up the bottom window on the console. Okay, what did I do? Is that I, this is closed. It's gonna be slightly different depending on your browser, but most of the browsers have kind of, kind of come to the same place and it's called inspect. Firefox, Chrome, um, I'm gonna have it on by default. Um, Safari, um, at least on the last version, the last Mac OS version uh, that I looked at, you had to enable it inside of one of some little tool. You had to enable it first somewhere before it showed up here for you to click inspect. But you click inspect and boom, all the goodness shows up here, right? And there's my little console log messages uh, that I had left for myself. Next thing that I wanna talk about, oh, while well, I'm stopping. JavaScript is what runs in the browser. So <clears throat> even that right now, what I just said is wrong. Let's go back uh, 10 years. 10 years ago, 
if you had code that ran in the browser, code that actually was downloaded, right? Because I downloaded these images, I downloaded the text, my browser's actually running it here on my machine in my living room. The code that runs on your machine in your browser uh, is called JavaScript. This is JavaScript right here. Now, one of the things that's happened um, to JavaScript in the last 10 years is that uh, there's this thing called Node, Node.js. And what's Node.js? It's not a different language. It's still JavaScript, but uh, they made it so that you can run JavaScript on a different machine. So when I, when you, you know, when you send in a, when you go to a, like google.com, you're basically asking the Google web servers, hey, give me the google.com web page. And uh, traditionally they've had like programming languages like C spit out their, their content. But they made it so that you can actually run JavaScript over there on their server. So JavaScript can run on your browser. In fact, again, under 99% of the circumstances, if there's code, code running in your browser, it is going to be JavaScript. <clears throat> the code that runs on the server, sometimes they call it backend languages, middle tier languages. Um, those languages, there's a whole host of families, there's all sorts of languages for that. There's C, there's C++, Python, someone mentioned Python earlier. Um, the, we do, we train in Java and C Sharp, that's another language. Uh, Scala is another language. Um, there's a, oh my, I could go on. One of those languages that runs in the back end, that's a middle tier language, is Java. So, it is a back-end middle tier language exclusively, Java. It only runs on the back end. Okay. Uh, what's the difference between an object and object reference? <sighs> the difference between an object and an object reference uh, is a little bit, in, uh, and so you have to be mindful of the conversation and context uh, when you're listening to a developer, but very specifically, just based on what I was doing here, you can refer the thing that's in memory that actually holds everything. You can say that that's the object, right? If you're gonna, if you, if I was gonna make a distinction, the object reference is simply the reference to that object. So you can say that this variable is an object reference because it refers to it references this object, right? If we're gonna make a distinction between those two words, in conversation depending on the developer, depending upon whatever's going on in that conversation, it could, uh, someone might use it interchangeably. Okay, so here's my person first name. Oh, and then uh, let me get rid of the, the twin for a second because I just wanna get rid of some code. And what I'm gonna do now is that you see me now create variables. You see me create an object and I am initializing this object with two properties. Later on, I can decide to say, hey, person, I forgot to give the, I, give, I forgot to give the person an age. So here comes the age. Uh, oh, no, no, don't tell, don't tell Liliana, I did that by mistake. I'm dyslexic. I meant to say 25. So there's Liliana. So after the fact, I can dynamically add properties to this object, all right? Now you can see here that this object um, now en encapsulates these three properties. Uh, first name, last name, and age. And notice here also that the age is rendering, it's showing up here without, um, without quotes. So this is important. Um, quick little story, when I, when I first, first cohort at, at Asavio, I, I can't tell you how, I mean, I, this is just what we do in JavaScript. Uh, the first person that came out of our boot camp to get a job uh, out of our program, um, he, for some reason, he ended up doing this the first day, first week on the job. Um, and he said that a couple of the developers that he was working with didn't know that you could do this, right? They didn't know that you could do this. For me, it was a little mind blowing. Uh, for him, it was really mind blowing. Um, but also important that I bring it up anytime I talk to people um, who are newer to software development is to say, hey, uh, there's so much to learn. Uh, that what might seem like obvious and something cool to learn is something that you might have taken for granted like I did. Not everybody knows that, right? Uh, there's always an opportunity to learn and uh, someone sitting next to him who had been programming for years, he went in week one and was teaching them what to do in some respects, right? So I'd um, like to tell that quick little story there. Next thing, uh, before I open up a can of worms, let me see if we got any other questions. 
So R, R is another <clears throat> backend language. Uh, and no, we don't train uh, in R. All right, so let's um, pretend that these two lines of code are not two simple lines of code. Um, let's pretend that they are really complicated lines of code and that there's 50 uh, lines of code there. If I found those two lines of code to be exceedingly helpful, um, ex exceedingly helpful, I really love these two lines of code. It really helps me out a lot and I wanna use it everywhere. Uh, a bad programmer is just basically gonna copy paste this thing everywhere, okay? And so the fact that I'm copy pasting, the fact that I am repeating myself again, pretend with me for a second that this is 50 lines of really complicated stuff, not these two little simple lines. The fact that I'm repeating myself uh, is uh, a violation of one of the uh, simplest, uh, one of the easiest principles to remember, the dry principle. Just because it's dry, you want to stay dry. Uh, the dry principle, do not repeat yourself. So here is my complex code that, hey, you know what? I want to just redo it. Um, I wanted to use it over and over and over again. I'm just going to copy paste it. Now, the tough thing about that is that if I decided to say, wait, you know what? I need to change something. I didn't want to, I didn't want to console log the whole person. Uh, I just wanted to console log the person's first name, right? So if I did that, uh, I'll see that, oh man, now wait, I forgot. I have to go and do this everywhere else, right? First name. And so I have to go on and on and on. And this is going to be kind of easy because it's all on one page. But in the real world, if you ended up doing this, um, it could take you a long time. And in fact, this is probably the source of a lot of problems when you ask a developer that what you think should be a really quick change uh, ends up being like a week long, two weeks long process is because they weren't, you know, they, they weren't writing the best code in the world and that they have to go in and duplicate a lot of their work. So instead of doing this, instead of writing the same code over and over and over again, what we do is we write, um, we kind of wrap this code up in a nice little package and we want to uh, invoke and we want to call and we want to make use of these two lines of code uh, in a very efficient manner. And much like I gave uh, my variables and objects names, uh, I am going to give the collection of these two lines of code a name. And so before I do that, I'm going to start writing a function. So what I'm going to teach you now uh, real quickly uh, is how to write a function. So the grammar, the syntax of how to write a function is to start out with the keyword function. Right, you can see it's in bright blue there. The keyword function, I need to give it a name. And so I wanted to say, um, uh, yeah, I'll just go with show message. So show message, here's my name, the keyword function, and then just part of the syntax, part of the grammar is I have to put open close curlies, uh, the, the open close curly uh, brackets here for the code block and the parentheses. If I do that and I hit save, we will see that my object graph also recognizes it here. And it puts us a nice little suffix here to tell you, look, show message is also a reference to something that lives in memory. Uh, and what is it that lives in memory over here at this address location? It is a function. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take these two lines, notice how it says Gregorio and Liliana here, because as the JavaScript engine processed all this, it got to this line, boom, let me output uh, first name. Boom, let me output this other first name. I'm gonna get rid of them and I'm gonna put them in here. And then when I hit save, we're gonna see that Gregorio and Liliana are no longer in the console. But what I've done now is that I have said that anytime I want these two lines of code to run, instead of simply copy pasting them like I was doing, instead of doing that, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna invoke this function. So I'm gonna say show message. Now again, you gotta pretend with me a little bit. This is some really complicated stuff in here. Uh, and instead of writing the really complicated 50 lines of code over and over, I just do it one line, little one line like that. And if I hit save, every single instance of that code running, boom, here it is, real quick. Now, this is part of it, all right? You say, hey, but you're still writing out some code. But in my super uh, complicated stuff, if I wanted to change it now, somehow, I only need to change it in one place. 
And by changing this in one place, I have affected how uh, all of these lines of code behave. And you can see that it outputs something very meaningfully different over there. Let me see what other questions we got uh, in JavaScript. Like, uh, okay, let's see here. Uh, if you right click on it, uh, do you have to set the values of the first name, last name when you create the person variable? No, I do not have to create this uh, right here, all right? If I took those out, uh, then what I'm gonna have is just a person object and then it's only gonna have the age, right? So this little curly bracket guy is called the object literal and I initialize an object with two properties. So I don't have to do that. But, and again, there's a different way to initialize objects too. Um, let's see here. Uh, uh, is show message a name you choose? Yes, totally a name you choose. I totally a name I choose. I can, now here's why I chose show message because you see I was showing all this stuff. If I, if I would have called it um, do something, which uh, you totally could, all right? So here's do something, still works. But the, the thing about the function name and like all variable names is that it's gotta give us human beings some type of information about what it does. If you just call it do something, I have no idea what it does. And so it really hampers what I refer to as developer productivity. Naming something appropriately, even variable names, um, really improves developer productivity dramatically. So uh, it's like naming your kids. It's like you have to really take a, make, they take a lot of time in figuring out what names you want to put, give them. If Clayton is blah, 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 is, uh, is JavaScript, is it like any other language you have to install and import packages, libraries, and modules? Yes, depending on the style of JavaScript that you write. Uh, you do imports, you do, you do all sorts of importing, you, you can source in libraries. The short answer is yes, but JavaScript, because it is probably one of the older languages that you might write, um, uh, granted C is pretty old, but like JavaScript has been around for a while where um, you know, you know, web, I mean, talk about like, you know, 1990s, right? It's been around for a really long time. So most of just about everything we used to do in JavaScript before we did imports of packages and libraries and it was all of that stuff. There was a very vanilla kind of, um, I guess you want to call it archaic way of doing stuff that is still valid today. So, but when you do modern JavaScript development, absolutely imports and whatnot. So no parentheses are needed only, uh, only with numbers. No parentheses needed only with numbers. Mm. Martha, if you can give me um, a little bit more about that. No parentheses are needed. <clears throat> um, no, oh, um, no double quotes are needed. So the double quotes, yeah, you only need double quotes when you're dealing with strings. Quotes or double quotes. But does the property in the person have to have a value? Ah, does a property in person have to have value? No, you could say, um, so I can't, I can't just do this. This is um, bad syntax. I cannot do that. If I hit save on that, you see a little, the, even the, the coding environment is telling me, look, this is something wrong here with the little red indicators. What you can do is one of two things. You can say null. Null is a keyword that basically means nothing. Uh, or you can say uh, undefined. Now, the term nothing and null and undefined is a little one of the one of the things that people get tripped over a little bit because uh, you can see that they don't they don't have a value, right? And so they they it's not they they don't have a value. It's not that their value is even though this says the value is null, they lack a value. It's it's a it's an interesting topic to understand uh, null and undefined. Um, because depending on your programming language, uh, you have to use special syntax uh, to talk about uh, a property or a variable that isn't there. It's a little strange. Just just be be mindful of that when you get a little bit a um, uh, little bit more into your uh, career there. Uh, does the property have? Okay, so there we go. We did that. 
Oh, and we're running up against um, the hour. So let me just take some questions here. Um, so um, <clears throat> the, the, what I recommend people to do first is to, believe it or not, uh, if you're completely brand new to coding, like and you haven't tried to write instructions for the computer yet, uh, I recommend HTML and CSS, and specifically at Sabio, we direct people to the Code Academy, the basic HTML and CSS. Don't do the, the like, they, they get a little carried away, but just basic HTML and CSS. I refer to HTML and CSS as the gateway drug to programming. One of the reasons why we try to, you know, be visual here and we try to get you to build stuff instead of just console logging things is we want to have like some type of feedback loop between what you're typing and you want, to, you want to see something. People always like to see some things and get you a little excited, get you hooked. Again, the gateway drug. So HTML and CSS, it gets you uh, to start developing a new relationship with your keyboard and your computer. And then right away to JavaScript. And now I'm not gonna say JavaScript because it's the best. Careful when you ask a developer what's the best language out there. I say JavaScript because it's really just, um, you know, you talk to 100 developers, if they're gonna have one language in common between them, it's probably gonna be JavaScript. So um, there's a ton of resources online and there is a good chance that you can find someone close, if not in your inner circle, uh, close to your inner circle that could be helpful with JavaScript. But so only because this could be the easiest thing to get resources for, uh, would I tell you that then JavaScript should be your first uh, actual software development language. Okay, uh, I work on a team of engineers and I am on the business side. Uh, I want to accelerate my understanding of our technical products and JS to follow the compasses. Do you have any programs or books that you recommend? Hmm, well, uh, man, I, there's just so many. Um, like the first thing that I, I wanna come and tell you about is uh, podcasts. I would listen to some podcasts. And again, if you throw a rock, you probably hit 10 people to do podcasts on JavaScript and, and that kind of technology. Uh, but I would think that you go to some podcast and kind of like a, a podcast, you're going to, you know, you're going to find a connection. You're going to like the different people's different, different styles. So I think that would be a good way to go at it because, well, granted, we're not spending a lot of time in our cars anymore. Uh, but, you know, maybe go for a walk, go for one, listen to it uh, so you can hear uh, people talking about it. Right. Um, when, the kind of question that I was just asked is more like you just want to be engrossed. You want to uh, be surrounded by the language of what's going on. Do we recommend React? Absolutely. Absolutely React. We train React in our bootcamp. Hard. In JavaScript, what's the difference between null and undefined? Um, that's a little bit, uh, they, there's a slight difference. One of them has to deal with um, how it's referenced and memory and how if, and this is going to be weird, but like, you can actually try to add these things, but the the way that they're stored in memory, if you try to use these these values in math, it ends up behaving differently. Uh, so for, for all intents and purposes, you just need to know that null and undefined are basically not a value. And then you only need to know the answer to this question like the back of your hand for like one of those puzzle interview uh, questions has to do with the reference of how it, how it points to something and then how this thing called type coercion uh, behaves against null or undefined. Do you offer HTML? We cover HTML, uh, um, not the foundational stuff. The, the internet is covered with great basic HTML resources. And in fact, when we come into our pre-work, we tell you go do the basic HTML um, in CSS, because we focus mainly on software development, not on constructing the, the skeleton of the page. We do very light. And because HTML itself is a huge, HTML is huge, CSS is huge. Um, we, we try to pick up the HTML that we need as we go. Uh, React or Node, which do you recommend? They're two different things. Re Roughly speaking, React is something that is going to run for your browser or your phone, on your phone. Notice something that runs on the back end. So slightly different technologies. 
uh, and you uh, only have a boot camp, but you have something like Udemy. Oh yeah, so look, um, we're gonna send you out an email that's gonna have a link uh, for, thank you for coming here, that is gonna have a link directly to our, our LMS site, Learning Management System. We have two free courses on there. Yeah. On, it's like 20, 25 hours of videos, completely free, um, that really gets you into a really great place um, it gets you to a really great place. It has exercises in it, and it gives you access to our Slack channel. We can have uh, office hours uh, for free twice a week. Hey, Gregorio, I actually just shared the link on the chat, so I will be sending you as uh, uh, Gregorio uh, mentioned and following email after this webinar. But I would love to for you to have access to that link that uh, Greg was mentioned. So I just posted that on the on the chat on the side. Wonderful, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, um, complete beginners. Like you see this little guy over here, this, uh, this equal sign. I make fun of myself because look, this is an equal sign. Uh, I talked 30 minutes about this equal sign because it's an assignment operator and it's really important. Uh, and not to be confused with uh, a comparison operator or a strict comparison operator, which is three equal signs. So I talk about 30 minutes for an equal sign. That course is, is meant to be like, you don't know anything about JavaScript or software development. And again, it's not just JavaScript, but your tools. Super important to focus on your tools. Anytime you're writing code, how can I be using my tools to be better? You really gotta be um, focused on, on doing the, both because then your skills are gonna, momentum is great, right? You wanna build up momentum so that you stay engaged and so that you can build cooler stuff and good positive cycle happen. Okay, um, I don't have a good podcast that I would recommend for for this for this specific use case that I was asked about earlier. Um, I, I mostly listen to like startup entrepreneur podcasts myself. I do a lot of reading for my coding, uh, and I read like React, the React documentation. I read the document. So this is kind of I feel a little geeky. I read the documentation of the tools that I use, um, and then I listen to the like startup entrepreneurs like. Um, Kara Swisher kind of stuff that uh, for podcasts. You do get a cert certificate. You absolutely get a certificate. Um, and in fact, next month, we're going to start offering a different certificate, not just in, so we do the certificate for our full stack web developer program, but then there's uh, a certificate program that we're going to launch for our students in, um, oh my God, they're going to kill me. I forgot the name of this company. Oh, they're going to kill me. We're launching another certificate. We'll leave it at that. Um, uh, in it's a big company out of San Diego, and I'm forgetting their name. They're going to hurt me. Ugh, I lost it. Okay. Uh, anything else? Oh, can uh, can I share my email? If anyone, how can I get feedback? How can I get feedback? Anybody wants to send feedback in? Please send me feedback about how I could be better. It's really important that I try to get, get better myself. So. If you have feedback, is there a mechanism that we have in place? Because I don't mind sharing my email, but I don't know how you do that normally. Uh, we can we can uh, post it also on the email um, if you want the, for the follow up uh, email after the webinar, Greg. I can, mm -hmm. I can I can also add your email. So if people wants to give a feedback or something, definitely. Okay, I I don't see um, to answer this other question. Software. Uh, you know, a lot of people get their start in software when they realize that they, man, if they learn how to write a little little bit of code, they can help themselves in their day-to-day -day lives, right? So, um, you know, sometimes people talk about writing uh, little bits of software macros inside of Excel. Uh, someone mentioned R. Sometimes they do they use these or Python to do a little bit of uh, data crunching. Uh, and that's where some people get hooked, right? Because they use a little bit of coding to improve their lives, save some time, and then that kind of takes them, uh, it gets a hold, gets a hold of them. Wonderful, we have people already saying they are signing in into Savio to get more courses with you, uh, Gregorio. So this is, this is great. Uh, I want to thank you very much. We pass a little bit of the hour. Thank you for taking all the questions for the audience. Um, I mean, we cannot be more thankful. You are wonderful. You were to teach. I think everybody who participated here uh, enjoyed it. So, um, you know, if anybody wants to, like I said, uh, get a feedback to Gregorio, you can either email me 
or Latinas in Tech, we pass along your information to Gregorio. And also I'll add the email from Gregorio in the, in the following uh, email. So you can, you know, have contact with him directly. Okay. So thank you again. Uh, we, thank Latinas you very much for having me. Uh, look forward to the next one. Absolutely. That will be wonderful. And for everybody who is still here, I will encourage you if you haven't created your, um, you know, Latinas in Tech profile, you can just go to latinasintech.org and you can, up, uh, you know, create your profile there. You will always be informed about the new uh, events coming up uh, next. So we're doing webinars every week. So uh, we'll be, you know, happy to see you again. Okay. All right. Thank you, Gregorio. Have a good Thank afternoon. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. You too. Bye.